It's Brian Preston, the money guy. When you see this stuff, and we just told you, I, I thought this guy was going to be like all the other social media guys I didn't like, but then I started watching his content, and I realized there's something more there. So let's talk about how he did it. I yep. want to I want to kind of, because I think we have unique financial sure. knowledge. We ought to share the love and tell you, how did Graham actually build his audience and make his wealth? Realize, I talk about this all the time, the three big components of wealth creation mm-hmm are three basic things. You have discipline, meaning that you live a way that you're living on less than you make. I also talk about how important it is to take a portion. That's the money. That discipline creates money, Mm -hmm. that you use that money, you invest it, you let it turn into your army of dollar bills, and then you just let it have the time. So that's the third component. It's time to let it grow and build. So Graham is kind of unique in the fact that he definitely has discipline. We're going to talk about his minimalistic sure. lifestyle and those type of decisions he's made. But this guy is way too young to have maximized the money and time component. Sure. So how is this guy successful? Uh, he actually used a supercharger tool called leverage. That was yeah. the way he did it. And that's what a lot of real estate folks do. That For most folks, most wealth accumulators, you have to have discipline and money and time. Well, if you do want to short change, not short change, but hypercharge, shortcut, sure. shortcut those, uh, the time and the money part, you can use leverage to do that. And I'll talk about leverage in a minute because I do want to give some some additional thoughts on that. But I, I want to focus on, look, minimalistic style, mm-hmm. because you saw the guy makes $2 million a year, yet you find out he's still living in a duplex yep, that, that he owns. And he, the rent from the other side of it covers his expenses. So he's basically living for free in the duplex. It's like a housing hack, essentially. And I think that's, he's also, if you listen to the shows with him and his, his girlfriend, I mean, he, he sounds like he really is this cheap. Oh yeah. So he's really living a life that's that minimalist. He'll brew, he'll brew a pot of coffee and stick in his refrigerator and he drinks his, he calls it his 20 cent uh, iced coffee. I think that's insane because I'm going to go get my delicious, expensive coffee. But he still does it, and I think you that's just impressive. make your coffee at home. It's just the beans are expensive. Yeah, that's what I mean. But he like puts yeah, whatever. It's just a whole different thing. You're saying he might have sanka in that thing. It's yeah. not. He's not even using good beans. Yeah, he might be using sanka. He's not using the good stuff. <laughs> so the other thing, Graham. If you look at how he made his money, I give him props in the fact that in 2011. He could not have done better when he got into the sure. real estate marketplace. Um, and, and here's the thing. He's got all the, the, the trappings of being a successful person. He's got hard work, de- deferred gratification. He definitely understands how money works with risk and reward. And then I think his, he has great instincts to spot value. And you see that he even lists what his important real estate philosophies are. But this is how I know Graham's not just lucky. You heard he only has six rental houses. Right, and he's been in he's been in the real estate game since like the mid to late 2000s, so 10, 12 years. You'd think he would have way more than six properties, right? Yeah, if if it was a system because this is where there's so many people out there selling their real estate system, you, you know, you're just basically going out there, you're buying his requires a little bit more. He's paying attention to the value what you're paying for the house because we all know the biggest thing in real estate is your purchase price. Yep. You know, so because you do not want to buy into real estate at the tippity top of the market. You want to make sure you get value. And here's how you also know Graham is, is very aware of this. And we'll go through the six steps that he uses mm-hmm. for his real estate success. But you notice what he's doing right now in 2020. He's not looking to buy more real estate mm-hmm. in his area because I think he probably recognizes, hey, it's a little frothy. Sure. It's, it's a little expensive. So he's taking, he got such a good deal on those 2011 houses and some of the other property. He's actually, instead of trying to buy more because he can't find the value, he's actually putting more money back into those original houses yep. to kind of, that's, that Increase shows the me, amount of rent yeah, that, that shows generate. me that he's not just trying to force it down this corridor of getting more rental properties for the sake of getting it. He's actually paying attention to what he's paying for the properties as well and yep. what the return on investment should be. Yep. So then he kind of walks through, he has a sort of a six, six step real estate philosophy that he goes through. And he does the thing, thing that you just said right there. Number one, buys an undervalued property that he can get a good deal on. Mm-hmm. Number two, he buys a property in an area that I'm expecting will go up in value over the next 10 years. I think for most folks, you kind of have to stop right there at those two, because it's difficult to know if you're not in the real estate game, if the property you're buying is a good value. And it's even harder to know, oh, is this area going to go up in value? Sure. Unless you have some beat on the real estate market, it's pretty hard to do that. I think a lot of people wade into that water when they are very unprepared to make those assessments. And we've seen people do that the wrong way 
tons of times. Yeah, and I, here's the other thing I think is interesting about Graham, and this is something that I think people need to pay attention to, and we'll come back to it in a minute when we talk about can you do this yourself. What industry is Graham in in his day job before he became a YouTuber and a sensation? He's a real estate agent. Yeah, and we tell people this all the time, and, and I, I'll give you an, even a case study example of one of our clients, is that Graham lives, breathes, works in real estate. So he knows the industry. He knows it well. So it makes complete sense that he has success in it. I had, we had a client, loved this client, works in the telecom field. He actually lays fiber. Sure. And I still remember we were talking to him about, you know, he should probably really work on building to save the 20 to 25%. Yeah. And he's like, guys, because the only thing I'm having trouble with with this whole thing is that why wouldn't I, instead of giving you guys an additional $5,000 a month, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I just go buy another piece of equipment and put another crew out there laying more pipe? And, yeah. and I was like, you know what? You should, because <laughs> probably if you have, now this is the key word, successful. That's right. But if you have a successful small business mm -hmm. and you're good at it, there will probably not be a better performing asset in your portfolio of net worth, on your holdings and your net worth than your successful small business. So if you can see that there's an opportunity and you have the skill set, this is not passive investment. This is definitely an mm -hmm. active investment. Go out there and do it. It's the same thing. Our business, we should continue to grow and focus yep. on that, on the active part of our money. Now, there is a key component and difference between passive money, meaning that it's your army of dollar bills you put to work so you don't have to work as hard with your back, brains, and hands versus the active where you are having to give it that sweat equity to make sure that it's growing for you in the background. Yep. So step number one, he buys an undervalued property. Step number two, he buys a property area he thinks is going to go up. He then says he wants to get a low interest fixed rate, 30-year loan on the property. So he definitely deploys leverage. He then either renovates or fixes up the property so it'll be worth even more by the time that he sells it. Then he rents out the property and he makes sure whenever he does that, he has enough rental income to cover his costs plus the profit. Hmm. So he doesn't want to actually be outflowing any money. And the number six, he says, repeat the same process and do it over and over and over again. Now, that's Graham's real estate mm -hmm. philosophy. But I know from seeing some of the research we did for the show... He actually is, just like we dabble in talking about real estate, he dabbles into personal finance Absolutely. and passive investing. What's his thoughts? I mean, where is his money, Bo? And then what's his thoughts on the passive side of things? Yeah, so the majority of his uh, net worth, the majority of his wealth is in real estate, but he did recognize, hey, I need to spread my risk out. I do mm -hmm. need to be diversified. So he did have a goal, and I think this was a goal in 2019. He said, I want to build up the passive investments that I have in the stock market in just regular liquid investments. And so in 2019, he made an effort to begin putting a big chunk of his income towards passive investments. Yeah. And, and I thought it was interesting, once again, being transparent, he actually shared how he invests. And I, this was, he does 70% total market index, 20% yep. international market index, and then 10% bond index. And I think he even shared that he used Vanguard. Yeah, and I think that's great. Now, one thing I would tell Graham if I was going to have a conversation was like, hey, that's awesome, but you got to, because he says, I want to invest like this. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to pay attention to it. I'm not going to give it any attention. I'm just going to put the money in and let it grow. Well, 10 years from now, I'm going to argue that Graham's risk profile will probably be different than it is now just because he's going to be 10 years older. And the size of it will change the risk profile. Change. So I think something like a target retirement fund might be a better fit than just the 70-20-10 portfolio, but he's doing okay. I won't yeah. fight him on that. And I'll even add, this is a little solid add in, Graham. When you get to a point, because I, I watched in some of your videos, if you are looking for a way to hide additional money that's outside of real estate, keep doing your real estate thing. I get it. But we know ways to turbocharge legally yep. through retirement assets and other things to save for super high income people like Graham. So it's just a little tidbit that I want to put out there. But I want to close out this section before we, but before we do. Show us where his income, because he once again, he's so transparent. He actually laid out where every dollar of his monthly income comes from. Yeah, so this is pretty remarkable. So he, he put this on his channel, and he says his typical monthly income is about $150,000 per month. Well, if you look at the breakdown, about 15000 of that comes from his rental properties. About 7000 comes from affiliates or sponsors. About 8500 or so comes from real estate commissions, meaning selling his real estate. About 9000 comes from his second YouTube channel. Almost 30,000 a month comes from his courses, which he does on Teachable. And then about 81,000 comes through his main YouTube channel. So what I think is really interesting, if you look at that 150, 
that's almost $120,000 of it yeah. comes from the social media influence part of what he does. That's